Imagine a horizontal body that is 20 times heavier than the Eiffel Tower floating freely in the water. This is how it looks. The giant evergreen ship that has a whopping length of 400 meters, running with the speed of 22.8 knots, is now wedged right at the center of a large Suez Canal. The canal serves as the shortest maritime route to Asia from location, and daily helps dozens of ships pass through it. This blocking of the world's most used shipping lanes is definitely not a minor concern, but a prediction of the soon-to-happen global crisis is. The ship is stuck at this location for a week now, with no hopes of the discharge of the ship. With nearly the heavy load of 20,000 containers, the ship is badly jammed between the wet sand and water. Most of the ships with goods for global trade pass through this 50-year-old canal, not only for its shortest distance, but also to opt for easy passage, with no maximum harm to the ships. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, please support our channel by subscribing and press that bell icon to get notified when we make a new upload. Right on the afternoon of 23rd March, the ship met this terrible accident and caused severe trouble for the rest of the 52 ships that pass the canal every day. This approximately makes up 7 to 12 billion pound trade from a number of goods including food, medicine, livestock, cars, and whatnot. The news of this unexpected evergreen incident unfolded like a wildfire and caused serious tension for the neighboring trade ports, who got all their money flows stopped for a week now. Many authorities have paid attention to the issue, but no one has yet found how the Evergreen got stuck in the Suez Canal. The grounding of the Evergreen is under numerous investigations and examinations at the present moment. According to the Canal Suez Authority, CSA, the officials reached a number of conclusions, finding what led to the shipping jam so harshly in the sand. While some may address the cause as an unfortunate power cut on board, which resulted in the blacking out in the ship, whereas many think the ship might have found it extremely difficult to steer the high winds, dust storms, and heavy wind blizzard while facing the power failure that hardly allowed visibility to anything. In contrast, the individuals responsible for ship control and management believe any sort of mechanical or engine failure led the ship to fell deep. Whatever the case may be, the locals blame the authorities for their carelessness of not monitoring the ship's movement throughout the entire time. Despite the prediction of bad weather, sandstorm, and muddy sand filler conditions, this movement of Evergreen was not given much consideration. The whole week was suspected to have high winds and heavy storms at regular intervals, just like one that happened on Wednesday due to Kamsin. For those who don't know what it is, Kamsin is a critical time, for Egypt has some extremely harsh winds blow out from the Sahara towards Egypt. However, numerous statements were stated by different individuals that studied the ship's condition and explained their thoughts. This resulted in a series of controversies and propaganda among the authorities disagreeing with each other. Sherry Nagar, the chair member of the shipping company, disagrees with the Kamsin statement, saying that numerous heavy latent ships have passed the canal in high winds and storms without facing any difficulty in the past. In support, Rabi, the SCA chair, also gave her opinion mentioning that strong winds and weather factors have never been the reason for the ship's grounding. With that said, Rabi shifted the attention of authorities to another possible cause of the Evergreen accident. At another place, he states the technical and human errors for the ship to lose its control and ground badly in the mud. However, other chairpersons didn't consider the declaration as the ship was moving at the perfect speed of 13.5 knots that was much higher than the canal's speed limit of 7.6 knots. Also, they appreciated the captain's excellent coping skill to balance the ship by speeding up in the high winds for preventing the ship from getting wrecked. Bloomberg has been continuously updating the ship's condition and seeking the accurate cause that commenced this unfortunate incident. Being a relatively old yet bulky ship, Evergreen was restricted to not enter the canal due to the rough weather conditions. As a result, the ship seized Egypt's significant Suez Canal and created a loss for billions of dollars in trade and commerce. All of the above causes about the Evergreen's accident was definitely an unexpected shock for officials to shippers and everyone who was waiting for the return of the ship. The Egyptian president calls the incident a mystery of fate that no one hoped for any time before. The initial days of the ship's blockage were truly traumatizing for the engineers trying to rescue the ship. Neither the country nor the traders are in a state to bear the loss of the ship's damage or afford the repairing of its expensive construction. Despite the comprehensive investigation of the ship, the damages of the ship are still not clear yet described accurately. However, the keel and vessel of the ship 
are known to have most of the destruction that can be repaired. Being a multinational conglomerate, the ground of Evergreen on Tuesday in Egypt's Great Bitter Lake pressurized several other authorities in Egypt who are answerable to the government for dictating the cause of the accident. It is for certain that if the ship had less weight carried on it, then it would have never met the accident. This is the reason it was badly sagging in the waterway between mud and couldn't show any signs of improvement even after several days. Either the blackout, high winds, thunderstorm, or Egypt's Khamsin, the initial reports didn't settle on a specific reason for the accident to avoid the quarrel among the people. On one hand, where traders have lost their night's sleep to resume the cash flow. On the other hand, the Evergreen's owner was puzzled into a pool of queries and miseries, wondering if the ship would come out in serviceable condition or will be broken in order to move aside from the canal. There were also rumors in the air foretelling that the owner might have to pay Egypt's canal authority for the loss and forces used to clear the canal for the easy passage of other ships. Near the city of Suez, there's another canal that was chosen as a suitable alternative for some ships. The route includes covering the complete Cape of Good Hope at Africa's southern tip, while it looked like a feasible alternative for time being, but had numerous downsides at the back end, such as the consumption of extreme time that is approximately two weeks, an extraordinary force to pass the ships. Not only this, but using this alternative route for more than a few weeks would cost an arm and a leg to the traders, due to the excessive costs of hundreds and thousands of dollars in fuel and maintenance of these ships who can't carry much load. Overall, there were several conclusions driven depicting the major losses the accident has done to everyone. But the most common and stressing one includes extended delays in transferring the goods, scarcity of goods, and high rising costs that were a big money burden for the consumers. The trading business has already been drastically impacted by the novel pandemic coronavirus, and this terrifying Evergreens incident further disturbed the economy of Egypt. The ship contains the tenth proportion of the overall trade, including seven of the world's total oil traded, and other basic necessities of the people too. The initial investigations about the ship were not too satisfying, as it had predicted 10 or supposedly more than 10 days for the whole issue to be resolved. However, the consistent day-night efforts and use of effective techniques had finally dislodged the ship right after seven days of the incident. By the time, a new theory also was introduced, claiming the ship didn't maneuver rightly in the direction it was supposed to. The whole mishap was not only too perplexing to investigate, but even harder to get resolved for the sake of global seaborne trade. As already mentioned, that Egypt had already faced a severe loss of $95 billion alone by the Evergreens blocking and has estimated to spend some billion dollars to resume the trade by properly using effective measures to be safe from such mishaps for the next time. Soon after the matter got resolved, all the 400 ships that were stuck due to the Evergreens blockage on the Suez Canal smoothly started moving across the path. As long as the Evergreen is concerned, there are still a few decisions yet to be decided regarding permissibility for the Evergreen to trade like before. Here we can see a possibility of the Evergreen to continue trade, only if it gives all the mechanical perfections and ensures that it's safe yet worthy to allow sailing on the water again. The last week has undeniably been a roller coaster for the whole globe, including its analysts, shippers, traders, and other official reporters who were arrested every moment to update about the latest progress of this major evergreen issue. This traumatizing incident also contributed to hyperinflation in the country and brought a huge surge in all the good prices except oil. This is because the ship carried derivatives of oil, but not liquefied natural gas like ethane or methane. Therefore, it followed the sudden unexpected falling oil prices soon after the incident. By the way, if you enjoyed the content, a sub to our channel would be amazing, and do share your thoughts on the evergreen incident and the comment section below.